seated. And those of you who knew Howard, that was Howard's theme song. And it, is a, it was a song for Sharon as well. It was one of her favorite songs. We have a treat for you this morning. It's a hymn, an H-I-M. <laughs> Please help me to welcome practitioner Vance Gardner, who is going to deliver the message this morning, a message of love, a message of hope, and a message of peace. Please help me welcome him. <laughs> uh, thank you, Carol. You are indeed appropriately named as a song of joy. <laughs> and indeed she was. As a matter of fact, that meditation was so good. I could hear the birds singing. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so I want to welcome everyone who is here, and all who join us on the internet, and those who join us in consciousness. I'm starting today with an account which is better told by the person who actually experienced it. So I invite you to listen with me for a couple of minutes, please. Thanks. to rupture in my brain while I was doing the Johnny Carson show. For two days I didn't use anything because I was unconscious. But um, it is what I knew, the knowledge that I had because that kept me alive. And let me say this, I had marvelous attention. I had wonderful doctors, I had nurses. Uh, my family was uh, of a healing nature for me. I had all of the uh, uh, things that I needed from the human side. Uh, but when a man, when the doctor would come to my room every day and explain to me uh, why I had to die, uh, I would have to uh, re resort to the God inside of me. And I have to remember that my God is a healer. I would have to remember, I don't have to die because you say so. You ain't got nothing to do with how long I live. This is between God and I. And I had something to fall back on because of the training I had had. But it was the Christ inside me that healed me and made it possible because um, from what they said, I was, was supposed to be dead before I get the floor. You see, uh, that was their opinion. And, and they had studied, uh, the doctors had studied many years uh, uh, to tell me that. And I had to just not believe any of their study points uh, or any of the, any of that. I had to believe that God had things for me to do and he was a healer and he would bring me through. And he did. That's Reverend Delores Letts. Truly amazing. You know her from the, our TV show, Touch by an Angel, it, as it was titled back in the day. You know, songs. yeah, and our songs, yeah. We, can, we too can do amazing things. And this is the essence of what I'll share with you this morning. I'm beginning to grasp that the greatest understanding comes to me through the resolution of seeming paradoxes. It is absolutely true that we can do amazing things. It is also true that by ourselves we can do nothing. It is the Father within who do it, the work. Emma Curtis Hopkins, the mystic who was called Teachers of Teachers, as a new thought pioneer, she said that we can allow the works of truth to unfold in our lives as divine minds, to preach the gospel that God is alive in us and as us, heal the seemingly sick, 
cast out demonic passions or harmful addictions and wrong thinking and raise the dead by awakening humanity to its spiritual magnificence. In the book, Unveiling Your Hidden Power, Dr. Ruth Miller gives an affirmation from Emma, which is suggested we do every Friday morning to facilitate this process, which I have slightly mod modified this affirmation, and I'm going to read it, then you can repeat it after me. So I work the works of good, so divine power works through me and as me to will and do what is mine to do. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the loving creator that dwells in me does the work. So let me read it from the beginning and you can just repeat after me. I work the works of good. I work the works of good. So divine power works through me and as me. So divine power works through me and as me. To will and do what is mine to do. To will and do what is mine to do. The words that I speak unto you. The words that I speak unto you. I speak not of myself. I speak not of myself. But the loving creator that dwells in me. But the loving creator that dwells in me. Does the works. Does the works. From the consciousness of the unity of the infinite in us, true us and as us, as the founder of this teaching, the signs of mine, Ernest, Ernest Holmes put it, there is one life which is God, and that life is my life now. We do amazing things. The Gospel of St. John tells us that Jesus, the master teacher, said, that if we practice what he taught, we will do the things that he did, and even greater things. He went on to say that anyone who wanted to do this could do this from a consciousness which glorified the Father in us, and it would be done. So there is a power for good in the universe, and we can use it. Greg Braden, uh, Braden, a uh, scientist, researcher, and spiritualist, did research over a number of years and he concluded that we can use this power to heal and do amazing things when we pray with the feeling that it is already done. And he used the evidence of tri Chinese practitioners of this method methodology curing a tumor in real time. And you can see this on the internet if you Google his name. And he used it to show how rain could be manifested after a short prayer of realization and even peace in the Middle East. He explains the quantum physics behind the use of this power, which I will not attempt today. <laughs> but in the glossary of the science of mind, Ernest Holmes writes that realization means an impression of reality on the mind, a clear, a clear apprehension and acceptance by the mind that a thought or condition is actual, that it is already done. Effective prayer is realization. In this teaching, we have been told that there are two forms of affirmative prayer, realization and the argumentative approach. The aim of the argumentative approach is realization through a step-by-step -step process. We usually suggest five steps, but when we know where we are going, the number of steps are not as important as getting there. I've been thinking that doing spiritual mind treatment can be seen like singing. Julie Andrews, in my opinion, may have misled a lot of us by singing that when we know the notes to sing, 
we can sing most anything. But it's when we can sing the notes, <laughs> not just knowing them, that we can sing most anything. When we can get to realization, either through steps or direct awakening, then we can truly do amazing things. The principle is simple, but the practice is a challenge because it is a matter of consciousness. On Friday, the 22nd, that was Friday that just gone, I was facing a challenge of getting someone to do a favor for me, which very few pe persons could do because I needed it done at that appointed time. So while waiting to be seen, I had to choose how to spend the time. So I decided to think about this encouragement. And it came to me that I should do what I was encouraging you to do this morning. So I centered my sins, closed my eyes, and went into this deep feeling place of it being already done. I know I was there when I heard somebody said, VG, not only my friends call me that. And I was so deep in thought that I thought it was part of my prayer <laughs> and God calling out my name. <laughs> you know? Until I heard the person say it again. VG, what are you doing here? And what are you doing? It was then that I opened my eyes and I see that the answer to my prayer had so appeared. And this was exactly the type of friend I needed to see at that moment. Isn't that amazing? Before we can get to the feeling of the good we desire being already done, we have to be receptive by preparing our consciousness. That's, this is why we first have to recognize consciously that there is a power and then unifying with it, knowing that it is now our power. And it is from this consciousness of love, joy, abundance, health, peace, light, or oneness that we can feel the realization. So singing is a challenge for me. I don't know how many do re me's may help me. But I know if I need a son who I can ask. You know? Similarly, if realization, get into that feeling place of it being already done, is a challenge for you, you can always ask a minister or a practitioner to pray for you because that is what we are trained to do. But we live in a loving, supportive universe which we call God. And this greatness and ability is within all of us as well as the means to use it for the glory of this which called us into being and expresses through each and every one of us. Joel Goldsmith in consciousness is what I am, tell us that we cannot really live until we have found something greater than ourselves to dedicate our lives. He goes on to say that we must learn to open our consciousness so that the inflow of spirit, open our consciousness to the inflow of spirit and make a matter of praying without ceasing. I call this living our prayers. And it is from this state of being that we can do truly even more amazing things in our own way. Not, a, not all of us will do what Emma Curtis Hopkins encouraged us to do. And not everyone is called to be a minister or a healer. But all of us can play our part in our mission of awakening humanity to a world that works for all. Indeed, many of you are helping to play your part in uplifting and inspiring ways. I'm aware of the ways many of our members serve selflessly in empowering and enriching the lives of others. But I'm not aware of all who do this, so I thought it not best to call out anyone so I just want all of you to big up in yourself and to bless up in yourself. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> the most effective and positive and divine service that we can provide is to foster self 
realization of oneness, our oneness with God, each other, and all things. This level of realization can only come to us, according to Goldsmith, by grace, and cannot come to us through steps or even spiritual practices. But we can prepare to be the place and make the space for a spirit to do what it does. And like Jesus, Goldsmith, Ernest Holmes, John of God, and other mystics, our presence can heal. In order to open our consciousness to the inflow of spirit, as Goldsmith advises us to do, in dedicating our lives to something greater than, that is bigger than what we are, it is best to do meditation and life visioning practices. We meditate to quiet the mind, to be able to hear our inner voice, and visioning to be in alignment with the highest vision, version of our lives, or from the vortex, as Esther X would say. The most important thing is to be centered so that we can hear the call of spirit, however it may come, and serve from this consciousness. When we say yes to the call of spirit, amazing things manifest. This call may come even in the midst of seeming confusion, like when Tremaine Brown heard the people screaming, somebody see of the boy in my wash right down the gully. For those of you on the internet, it means that a young boy was caught in a gully and he was being washed away <laughs> by, the by the currents. But no amount of screaming was going to save him. Maybe somebody prayed for a miracle, but Tremaine decided to be the miracle. I was listening to an interview that he did, and he said it was natural for him, which meant that his heart was open to spirit. He didn't think that he cannot swim or to get into any form of reasoning. He just acted from that place of love and decided to be in love in action. And he did something amazing. And I'm not just talking about saving Ronaldo Reynolds from drowning, but he showed that we can all do amazing things when we allow the Father within to do the work. What struck me during an interview I heard on Smile Jamaica, which to me is the best morning show on TV, anywhere in the world, <laughs> was when he said that Renata started to pray, and this prayer gave him strength and the presence of mind to see the opportunity that came in the form of a branch he could hold on to so that others could help to get him out of the gully. You know? Jesus told us that if we seek the kingdom of heaven, that is to realize our oneness with God and each other, then all that we required would be provided. And this story supports that because Tremaine, who was deported from the UK and labeled a deportee, and this perception limited his opportunity but he's now seen as a hero with lots of job offers and gifts. We too can open our hearts and minds to the call of spirit to us and to this temple to be who we came here to be and to do, amaz to do the amazing things we are here to do. Goldsmith tells us we can only prepare ourselves by practicing the principles of spiritual living and to remember them consciously. The temple has now undertaken what is called the Thriving Ministry Initiative. And one of the practices we recommended is for our members and congregants to be what we call on our cards. For those who don't know what I'm speaking of, about, it is a practice whereby you select the three persons that you admire most. These persons may be persons you have only read about or heard about, and don't, you may not even have to know them personally. You then choose the three qualities that you admire the most or resonates with you 
about each of these persons and know them. Then, from these qualities that you have listed, choose the three that resonates the most with you. This will now become what's on your card, right? And the practice is to embody these qualities and to check yourself from time to time, or as Goldsmith says, to remember them consciously. We will do amazing things through this initiative by being the right people with the right consciousness as Gary Simmons, the guru, so to speak, behind this concept, puts it. But we are a thriving ministry. And if you have not done so yet, I'm inviting you to get on board. In the prayer of our center, we declare that the temple of light is a sacred field embodying our spiritual community from which the Christ, peace, love, and joy emanate to touch, to heal, to bless, to prosper, and to liberate anyone who comes into contact with it in any way. It is already so, but the manifestation awaits our realization. Can you feel it? Now is the time to be who we came here to be. Woka Eroka, one of the USA leaving biblical scholars who works with the original Aramaic texts and who contributes to the Sands of Mind magazine, write that Jesus taught, demonstrated, and placed a strong emphasis on love, compassion, forgiveness, meekness, works of peace and understanding. All these are spiritual powers that indwell all humanity, which when expressed, creates heaven on earth. Friends, brothers and sisters, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, awaiting our recognition and acceptance. By affirming our oneness, realizing that it is already done, living our prayer, the prayer of our center, and being the joy, peace, abundance, health, light, and who we are and who we came here to be, we will not only be centers of spiritual spiritual living, which touch, heals, bless, prosper, and liberate all who comes into contact with us, but we will make a humanity to heaven and earth, a world that works for all. Yes, we can do amazing things by always remembering it is not me, but the Father within. He doeth the work. You are truly amazing. Namaste.